Kenny, congratulations on the win in the competition. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that because that's in the past, but we do have to change it up now. We are going to pick six postseason awards, but we're gonna add our own little flair to it, not the typical stuff that we see. Kenny, what's your first award? Hey, I appreciate the champ getting to go first, JP. And I'll let you know, my very first pick is the Hard Hat and Lunch Pail Award. This award goes to a guy that you know is going to show up every single day and put it on the line for the organization. He's a leader, and no matter what, he shows up. And that, my pick is Adrian Martinez. The way he responded to the adversity this year and throughout his career was tremendous. To see him lose that job, gain it back, and play the football that he did towards the end of the year, I'm very proud of him, and he has a lot to look forward to. Congratulations to Adrian Martinez. Definitely. He's well deserving of that. For me, I got to give Tom Allen his own award category. I think he deserves his own award category. And the award is the best Tom Allen celebration. And we've seen the crowd surfing in the locker room. We've seen the accidental headbutt after an interception. But for me, it was a slip and fall during the victory against Wisconsin. And I think it just shows the energy that this man has. He is so excited to celebrate with his coaches and his players that he couldn't even keep his footing on his way <laughs> over to celebrate. Really, really fun stuff. It was a great year watching the Indiana Hoosiers. Tom Allen, congratulations on that award. Kenny, what's your next award? Great pick there, JP. My next award is the War Daddy of the Year. This goes to the baddest dude that I think is in the conference, and it's obvious this year to me that that's Haskell Garrett. This dude is an absolute monster, and not to mention, he was shot in the face over the summer, back at, not even the summer, in September, and he had a pick six in December. This man's production went up from junior to senior year, and let me repeat that, JP, he was shot in the face. An absolute war daddy, and that is why he got my pick this weekend. You know, I, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, the man wasn't even eating solid food for a long time, just shows a resolve to get back on the football field. My next award is the Petty Coach of the Year Award. We got some pettiness within the Big Ten Conference. Fitz was in consideration because we've seen him get a little bit petty with the media every once in a while, but Kirk Ferentz is the winner of this award this year, and you kind of look at some of the moments he had. He had the Clapgate press conference. You know, are we playing tennis? Are we playing golf? I thought that was pretty petty, but the moment was against Minnesota where he called the three consecutive timeouts at the end of the game, and when he was asked why he did it, he said, well, I can't take them with me. That was a very petty response. Great to see the personality come out from Coach Ferentz. Who is your last award going to? My last award has to go to the dark horse of the conference, baby. And that's number 40, Xander Horvath of the Purdue Boilermakers. This dude was everywhere all year, catching passes out of the backfield, 100-yard rushing games. He was jumping over people, breaking ankles on the sideline. I mean, his best Mike at all star impressions with uh, running people over. This dude was showed out all year, and I don't think that many people knew about him. And that's why he's my dark horse of the year. And he was doing it all, whether it was catching the ball, running the ball. He was stuffing the stat sheet. My final award is the best play that didn't stand. And we had the Tory Taylor punt off the ground. I got to consult the rules committee because I don't think that's outside the spirit of the game. But the real play is from the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. We saw that play where they were trying to make the comeback and they had multiple laterals in there. Might have been seven, eight, nine of them. Super exciting. I mean, we even got to see a big guy throw the ball over his head to try to get it to a teammate. And part of me wishes that play would have stood just for the drama and how exciting it was. But I think it speaks to the culture of what's going on there at Rutgers. Those guys are always ready to play. They're always going to keep chopping to try to get a win. Kenny, definitely had a ton of fun with you this, man, this year, man. It's been a blast. And everybody, thanks for watching. <laughs>